Today on BRS TV, we're going to answer some of the most common questions we get related to dosing two-part. We will cover mixing, dosing, and a few other tips. The most common question we get is the directions say add two cups of material. Am I supposed to use the included measuring cup or a standard 8 ounce measuring cup? When measuring out the dry material, you should absolutely use a standard 8 ounce measuring cup. The included cup is for measuring the dose of solution added to the tank and measures in milliliters. When mixing the solution, is it a gallon of water and two cups of calcium? Actually, it's two cups of calcium and enough water to make a gallon of solution. The easiest way to do this is to fill the jug two-thirds of the way, add your calcium, and then fill the jug the rest of the way. It isn't important that it is exactly one gallon, but you should fill the container to the same point each time to maintain consistency. I get hard to dissolve clumps when I mix up my alkalinity. How do I get them to dissolve? The best way to avoid them is to begin by mixing in an open top container. By stirring the water while you add the alkalinity component, it should dissolve instantly. If it's too late for that and you already have clumps, try floating the jug in a sink of very hot water to heat this solution and shake vigorously. No matter how much I dose, I can never seem to get the levels up. Believe it or not, the most common cause for this is adding too much solution, and you should try cutting your dose in half or even less. If you are adding ever-increasing doses with little to no effect on your parameters, it is almost certainly precipitating out as tiny bits of calcium carbonate. This can sometimes be seen as an increase of white crust on heaters and pumps. I know I'm dosing the right amount of calcium and alkalinity, but the level still won't go up. Your magnesium may be really low. Magnesium prevents precipitation and helps us maintain high levels of calcium and alkalinity. The only other common issue would be dosing it too quickly or to a low flow area like a corner of your sump. Adding it quickly to a low flow area like this will cause really high levels in that vicinity and possibly cause precipitation. Is it normal for the water to cloud when I add the alkalinity portion? It is absolutely normal, but the effect should be temporary and dissipate fairly quickly. It is really important that the alkalinity is dosed slowly to a high flow area of the tank. When possible, I like to drip it directly into the intake of a high flow powerhead like this Hydor Corallia. Rather than dosing the three parts separately, can I just mix them together and only have to dose one solution? Unfortunately, that won't work. The calcium and alkalinity would pretty much immediately precipitate out if mixed together like that, and you would basically end up dosing tiny bits of calcium carbonate sand. Your instructions state to dose calcium and alkalinity every day, but magnesium less often. Can I dose magnesium every day as well? You could if you have an easy way to do so, but it's unnecessary. While magnesium is really important, it isn't consumed as rapidly, and levels are fairly high to begin with, so small drops have little overall effect on water chemistry. I have unexpected drops in magnesium. What's causing this? In a vast majority of cases, it is due to water changes. It's really common for some of the less expensive salt mixes to be pretty low in magnesium. So when you do your water changes, you are actually lowering the levels. You'll either have to adjust for this or use a higher quality salt mix. Finally, the most common question is what calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium levels should I be maintaining? It is pretty much universally accepted by most reefers to maintain a calcium level of 420 and a magnesium level of 1350. However, alkalinity is debated a bit more. A DKH of 7 is close to natural sea levels and what some people prefer, while others feel increased alkalinity levels around 10 lead to increased growth. Sadly, there isn't a ton of proven details on this one, but I can say I have seen a ton of success anywhere in this range. My suggestion is emulate someone you know who has had the type of success you are looking for. Most of the pros seem to like 7, however it's more critical that you watch it closely so it doesn't go too low. If you have any other questions, ask them down in the comments area below. We love interacting with you guys every week. If this is your first time here, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. We release new videos like this one each week. Thanks for watching BRS TV.